So hi, everybody, and welcome to episode 62 of Level Up, 60 minutes of live Q&A, where your questions and votes really do drive the show. Now, we're constantly improving uh, these events, and today we're going to be bringing in your chat comments directly into the production. So please do go ahead, introduce yourself, and let us know whereabouts in the world you are joining from. We'd really love to hear from you and involve you in the production. So we're going to share a link in the chat to vote up the questions that you would most like answered, of course, and for you to be able to add your own. We live stream Mondays at 8 and Fridays at 2 p.m. UK time to both YouTube and LinkedIn simultaneously. Today, we're going to be talking about the key skills needed to become a business relationship manager and improve those relationships that we have at work. It's a true life skill which everybody needs, and I genuinely believe that it's super helpful outside of the work environment as well. We've got a brilliant panel, so let's jump straight in and meet them. Returning to the panel today is Marion Bell. She's a management consultant over at Blue Visions and the Institute of Management. Marion works on upskilling clients across the project management and change disciplines. So welcome, Marion. Thanks, Nick. It's great to be back and greetings, everybody from Australia, um, Sydney. Thank you very much indeed. Marlene Jaganesh returns for her fifth appearance today. Marlene is a Director Emeritus of the BRM Institute, having won numerous awards for her work. She remains very humble and creative problem solver to professionals from all over the world. Welcome back, Marlene. Lovely to see you. Likewise, Nick, I'm delighted to be here with this uh, fantastic panel. Hey, excellent. Thank you so much. Um, new to the panel today is Adrian Taylor. Adrian is a qualified project manager working in the health sector here in the UK, dealing firsthand with the challenges of workforce and transformational change. So um, welcome, Adrian. Thank you so much, Nick. It's actually my second time today, but um, lovely to be here and dialing in from the UK, but from sunny South Africa. Huh? Okay. All right. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, it's a good it's a good point actually. I I lose track. I lose track a little bit from time to time. My apologies. Tom Cruise is also returning to the panel today. He's the director of worldwide advocacy at the Business Relationship Management Institute, and um, he has of course a global responsibility. He's travelled extensively and enjoys, I think, working in different and distinct business cultures around. You're spot on there, Nick. I appreciate. Being back on the panel once again, I'm joining from Denver, Colorado, and looking forward to a great discussion. Okay, excellent. Well, I can see already that we've got lots of people from around the world all joining us. Our question master for today is Sachitra Jacob. She's joining us from Bangalore in India. So uh, welcome back, Sachitra. Great to see you. Hi, Nick. Hi, everyone. Great to be back again for another episode of level up on Monday after a short break. Looking forward to everyone's yeah, questions and the answers. Very good. <laughs> Very good indeed. Okay, so excellent. So let's move on then. We'll take our first question, if we may, Sachitra. Thanks. Yeah, we have a question from Julie. How do you establish new business relationships off to a good start? Okay, so how do we get our business relationships off to a good start? Um, Marion, why don't we start with you and then we'll hear from Adrian. I think before you even get into a business relationship, you really need to have a lot of self-awareness about yourself and um, you know how you react to other people and um, how your, so what sort of professionalism you want to show to that particular relationship before you even speak to the people involved. It's so important, isn't it? We we don't we don't always know ourselves that well. We're not always that self aware. So mm. it's a super important mm. skill to be able to develop. I completely agree. Thank you, Marion. Um, Adrienne, and then Tom. I think absolutely, I agree with you, Marion. And I think another thing that I always like to do when, I, especially when I was set up my business in South Africa, was to understand what people wanted from relationship, what you eat wants. So almost establishing the boundaries right from the get go. Yeah, good point. And uh, being respectful in that way as well is is uber important. Um, Tom, what are your thoughts? Both what Marion and, and Adrian said are spot on. I think when you enter a relationship, you do need to have that self-awareness of, of where you're coming from. And then in order to set up the relationship from a, a perspective of 
what is that person looking for? I like to kind of think of the term shared ownership is come from a perspective of we might have different perspectives, we might have different experiences and backgrounds, but what is it that my business partner is working for? What am I working towards? And how can we come to an area of, of shared ownership and shared space where we can agree that this is what we want to work on moving forward? Um, and, and it mm-hmm. always it always helps to start off by asking questions as well, knowing what you want to talk about and knowing what you want to hear from your business partner um, just right, right from the get-go. Absolutely right. Marlene, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, I think the beginnings of a relationship is a really wonderful time, and it's it's important to remember it's a unique time, right, because you're never going to get that opportunity to create a first impression again. Um, and uh, I think my advice would be begin as you mean to go on. So set the tone early for how you'd like this relationship to be. Show up in the in in the way that you want this relationship to be. So if you want if you want uh, the relationship to be, uh, you know, to have trust and respect and so on, show up with those qualities, you know, with those values. Mm. Yeah, certainly right. I do think that um, beginning those early conversations by listening more than talking is a super helpful thing to do as well. <laughs> and actively listening. We might get on to active listening perhaps a little bit later, but um, some brilliant advice and what a lovely question to start us off. So thank you very much indeed, Julie, for that. Um, Suchitra, let's take our next question, please. Question from Matilda. Do you think business relationship skills are becoming more important than technical skills and experience? Marlene, start us off from with this, and then we'll hear from Tom. Uh, Matilda, I think you, you've, you've actually raised a really uh, great question there. Um, I personally do not think that it's a case of, um, you know, one being more important than the other. I think you know, both types of skills and experience are equally important. So the way I look at it is, um, you know, technical skills are like bricks and relationships are like the cement that actually holds um, things together. You cannot have, uh, you know, a solid structure without both. If you have a good business relationship skills, but they're not backed by technical skills, you run the risk of coming across like, um, you know, a sales, like, I don't mean to, uh, put salespeople down, but you know what I mean, like full of talk, uh, very little substance behind you. On the other hand, if you have ex- exceptional technical skills and you don't have business relationship skills, you're not going to be able to get messages across in an effective way to people who actually need to use your technical skills. So uh, I think you need both. A lovely analogy for us to have in our heads there. Absolutely. Thank you very much indeed, Marlene. Um, Tom. Your thoughts, please. And I honestly think that that analogy, Malini, is is perfect, and I, I wouldn't change, I wouldn't change it in any way, and and add I wouldn't add anything to it. Um, I would add one separate sort of perspective coming from the area of while they are both incredibly important, I think re- business relationship management skills or business relationship skills are coming more to the forefront of people's minds. So. In the past, it's always been a, a sort of given that you might or might not need to have these types of skills. And, and in the past, they've also been considered soft skills, right? Having these active listening skills, being able to appropriately understand the needs of somebody with whom you're working, um, emotional intelligence, things of that nature are really coming more to the forefront of research and people's minds in in business. So I think we're entering a time where it's sort of a a golden age and and allowing them to start flourishing um, and allowing us to focus, put more focus and intention behind developing those rather soft skills. I like to call them core skills. Interesting. Thank you. Marion, your thoughts? Um, Well, if you think about people actually do business with other people and they prefer to do business with people that they like and that they get on with. So we were in a contractors meeting the other day where somebody turned around and said, but we do great work and we send our reports in on time. And the client actually turned around and said, yes, everybody at this table does that. The difference is 
the relationship that you have with us. You flick the report to us every month. Somebody else flicks the report to us and then follows it up with a phone call or a cup of coffee. That's the difference. Ah, interesting. There you go. Excellent. Uh, Adrienne, your thoughts, please. I think what I was going to say is, is, is that um, I also don't think one is better than the other, but I do think what's key to in terms of the business relationship skills is building the trust with the person that you're working with. So um, it's about getting that trust stronger, which then will help with the relationship skills, which will then also then help with the technical skills and the experience side of things. Um, so for me, that's a very important element in terms of building that strong relationship. Yeah, and um, I completely agree with that. I think that for colleagues who are working in technical roles, subject matter expert roles, perhaps is a broader you know, term. So if you have a particular expertise, whether it's in finance or in HR or in um, you know, a technical subject and so on, and you're feeling that you want to build your influence, um, business relationship management skills are the way in which you do that, improving your communication mm. and doing that really simple mm. thing um, that... Marion suggested, you know, just follow it up with a call. You know, how was was that okay? You know, is there is the report, you know, just to, you know, bring a little colour to the report that you're providing, you know, because often the reader is in a different situation when they read it to you are when you send it. So from that point of view, it's actually a really handy thing to be able to do and you can get some great feedback from it. So marvellous. Thank you very much indeed, panel, and some brilliant advice. And I will carry the, the building blocks and the cement concept uh, with me going forward. So thank you very much, everybody. Excellent advice. So Chitra, let's move on, please. We'll take our next question. We have another question from Atield. Can we develop business relationship skills or is it more a personality trait? Okay, so is it nature or nurture? Adrian, start us off on this, please. Do you know when I started on my business journey, um, I'm, I was very excited and I wanted to jump into things and um, you know run with things and do things really fast and actually learned that sometimes that's not the best thing to do. So I think that there is definitely an element about development and building your personal skills to be able to uh, build those stronger relationships. So now, as I've gotten older and learned more about business and everything, it's now take the time to respond to things because that's also part of building the trust and understanding mm -hmm. how people work and working together to, to develop mutually beneficial relationships. Mm, an interesting idea. Very good. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Marion, your thoughts, please, and then Marlene. Um, I think some people are just more naturally inclined to be relationship type people. Um, but for anybody who wants to develop those skills, there's plenty of training around. Um, if you want to have a look at Praxis, for example, there's a whole section on improving your communication, leadership skills, negotiation skills, which are all the basic skills that you need for relationship management. Excellent. Some good advice there. Thank you. Marlene and then Tom. Um, I actually concur with everything you know, that has been said by Adrian and, and Marion. What I would like to add is that I think, um, you know, there's never a time when we can say our relationships are fully developed, right? Because um, we we have relationships with people and people are constant. You constantly have, um, you know, encounters with different types of people or even the people whom you whom you have had a you know business relationship with, with for a long time. They evolve over time, right? So we're constantly having to to exercise that muscle. And, and learn new things. Mm -hmm. um, and while it might seem, you know, as Marion said, that some people have a natural disposition for, um, for um, relationships, that is not to say that even if you're a bit shy or, or introverted, um, that you cannot have good relationships. Like it's not all about mm -hmm. uh, speaking, right? You can, you can actually have uh, established really good relationships, um, you know, through, through emails or, or other, other means of communication. Ultimately, it's about how we uh, how we treat other people and um, how credible you know we are in that relationship. Very true. It's very true, and that consistency is what builds trust over time, and so on. And um, Tom, final thoughts on this? Yeah, certainly. And I I would agree in the fact that it we can always develop our business relationship skills and. 
one of the ways in which we can do it the best, I would say, is by having intention, having intention with what we want to develop in particular. There are, as Malini said, you don't simply just have to communicate through speaking. It can be through email. So for example, if you want to get better at email communication, it's saying, okay, I'm, I want to focus on this this week, even today. Setting an intention aside for yourself every single day, every week, every month is important for seeing the development of where your focus is. And so you can go to training, training courses, you can watch videos online, you can do anything along those lines, right? But if you're not actually building intention and set and practicing that as much as possible, making mistakes along the way, um, then you're not actually able to apply that learning as much as you can. So having intention and being consistent, I believe, as, as was mentioned a little earlier. Yeah, definitely right. Thank you very much in, indeed, panel. Practice really does improve. Might not make perfect, but we all get better by uh, practicing and, and doing our best with it every day. So very good. Um, thank you very much indeed. What a, another great question for us. Now, look, if you're watching online and you're thinking, um, as many of you are, I can see people from the UK, from Dubai, from uh, Tunisia, from Spain. We've got folks from uh, Australia, of course. We've got a strong Australian contingent today on the panel. So thank you for tuning in from Australia. That's really great. Folks from Pakistan, from uh, Germany, all over the world. So um, please don't be shy. Put your question in and uh, then we'll feature it uh, on the show and we'll get it through to the panel really quickly. Um, so in the meantime, Sachitra, let's take our next question, please. Question from Julie. What do you do if you don't like the person you have to have the business relationship with? Ah, okay. So how do you manage that professionalism when it's challenged sometimes, Marlene? Um, so I think when it comes to our profession, like our business relationships, we have to really cultivate the art of being non-judgmental. Uh, it's not about whether we like someone or don't like someone. It's about what is the purpose of um, you know us uh, our, our engagement? Uh, it's for a, for a uh, you know it's towards to work towards some work outcomes, and we need to um, make sure that we never lose sight of that. When we when we start uh, putting on um, looking at things through the lens of is this someone we like or don't like, that will actually then start coloring how we um, how we respond to them, right? And that's never a, never a good thing. You should learn to be able to look beyond that. Yeah, it's very, very important, particularly folks who you know, have been enrolled for some time, you know, to constantly keep that uh, open mind, you know, um, in everything that we do. Uh, Marin, how do you go about this? Well, um, I just believe that you're paid to get on with everybody. So it actually doesn't matter. And if you're completely professional, nobody should have any idea of how you feel about them, whether you really like them or not, or you don't like them at all. Your behavior towards everybody should be the same and it should be professional. And it's really about getting the job done. Great advice. Thank you very much. And we'll try and do that every day. We'll try and do that every day. Um, Tom, next, please. And from a, an additional practical standpoint in when you come into this relationship right let's let's say you do color your your relationship as i i don't quite like this person right and you you are still working on yourself and saying okay you know i, I need to be as as neutral as possible or understanding coming from it from a the idea of shared ownership again right we're working in this together what we need to do um from a practical standpoint it's I always find asking questions just opens it up. It's stepping outside of myself, regardless of how I feel in that moment, to say, okay, what is this person about? What are they thinking? How are they feeling? And what do they need, right? It, we all exist in, in this realm to help others achieve their goals. I, I would venture to, to kind of just paint a blanket statement on that, right? And whether or not we like that person, it, it doesn't matter. If we can help this other person do something good or, or achieve something else, then we've had a positive outcome both for ourselves and those around us. Um, and it starts by just asking questions and showing interest. Interesting. Thank you very much indeed. Adrian? 
Yeah, actually, Tom, I think you also hit the nail on the head. I think that's absolutely correct. It's about asking questions. For me, it's also about understanding who wants what from the relationship. And if it comes to a point where you really do not like the person, or it could be reciprocated as well, maybe they don't like you as well. It's about understanding again, going back to the beginning and understanding exactly what your role in the relationship is, and then just sticking to those basics. If it's a situation where there could potentially be conflict, rather just go back to basics, just do what needs to be done, and then gradually build up the um, relationship from there. I completely agree with that. There's every opportunity to reset things, you know, if they have sailed off course a little bit. Um, it's for us to own that initiative, okay, and to take that initiative. And um, we always have an opportunity to pause and reflect before responding, okay? We might not be in control of what is sent to us, but we're certainly in control of the messages that we send to others. So it's a really good thing to try you know, kind of manage that and think that through a little bit. So thank you very much indeed, panel. Um, I'm kind of feeling that we're, we're sort of uh, almost got folks this morning asking us the kind of question where they're lying down on a couch. It's almost like counselling um, today that we're giving out. So we're going to take our next question and move on if we can, Sachitra. Question from Deepa. How can I say no to a customer request and yet preserve the relationship? Well, this is a real skill, isn't it? Finding ways in which you can actually, you know, say no to something because it's the right thing to be able to do. Um, Tom, start us off on this one, please. That can be a difficult position to be in at any point, right? Whether it be a request that you're, you, your hands are tied, you can't actually help, or from a time constraint perspective, right? If you're still not able to, to respond to a request, at the end of the day, people just want to be heard and known that they, they are listened to. So this may not solve every situation out there where you need to say no, but it's a, certainly a good start of simply saying, I understand what you're asking. I understand where you're coming from. I understand what your needs are. Any type of, of understanding um, language that can come out there immediately puts you both in that space, that shared space of, okay, this is where we are together. And they might not like the answer that you have to give, but at least you say, I, I've come to understand you. I see you. Unfortunately, this is not the direction that we can head. However, and then also giving them a, a means for the future still allows you to preserve that relationship of saying, however, I can help you in this, or I would like to do something moving forward, or again, asking questions and, and kind of trying to open and up and continue that dialogue. Excellent. Thank you very much, Adi. Marion? Um, I'm going to answer this from a project management point of view. Um, we always say with our customers that we never say no to a customer. So step one is normally smile sweetly. And then we sort of will look at what the governance policies and procedures say. So normally it's a change request. So we just ask them to fill in a change request. And then it's not up to us to say no. It goes to a change board and they can decide. The other side of this is there might be an opportunity for an extended contract or more business. Um, you know, if we could just be creative in terms of the way we manage a customer's request. Hey, so start with a smile. Start with, I think that that changes the intonation in your voice as well, actually, you know, to be perfectly honest. Mm -hmm. um, Marlene, your, your thoughts to help out here. How do we, how do we say no in the proper way? Uh, having been uh, in a situation many, many times where I've had to deliver, um, you know, bad news, and I've had to say, say, um, you know, the answer is no. One thing that I have learned is to actually be able to explain the reasons that led to that decision. Uh, and often, and if you can actually walk the other person through um, the steps, you know, this is, um, this is, and, and be very transparent about how that uh, conclusion you know, was, was achieved, rather than it coming across as just being your opinion. Um, so take an evidence-based approach, and that actually, um, I, I think, is, is incredibly helpful. And I know Tom and, and Marion did sort of touch on that, but make sure that you take uh, an evidence-based approach to saying no. Thank you very much. It is some really good advice. And I, I 
I think th thank you, panel, because um, it is a situation that many colleagues you know, find themselves in, you know, from time to time, and uh, do struggle, and particularly struggle when the, per the when the requester is either more senior than them, or perhaps you know a little bit more assertive, you know, um, than they might be, you know, kind of naturally. So developing those techniques is super important. I think uh, if you can do, particularly from a um, in a relationship management perspective, if there are things that you can do, then it's always good to include that. You know, there may be an element of what's being asked for that is possible, okay, or practical. Mm -hmm. Or indeed, you may be able to put their request to somebody else, you know, for their opinion as well. So there's always things that we can do, um, but from time to time, mm -hmm. even, even with doing all of that, the right answer is still actually... <laughs> Not on this occasion, you know, we're not able to do that just right now, but, um, you know, we've got hold of that thought mm -hmm. and we'll come back to it if we're able to. All right. And speaking about that kind of approach, thank you so much to everybody who's online and joining in um, in the chat. It's great to see you and uh, thank you for doing that. And feel free to type your questions into the chat and we'll get them into the panel straight away. All right. Excellent. So Chitra, let's move on. We'll take our next question if we can. Question from Jessica in Sydney. I feel I would have better business relationships if I had more time. How do you manage the time constraint? Adrienne, you're super busy. How do you manage it? Well, I think this for me is massively important about identifying how much time you need to spend with the people who you're working with. So it's almost like, and here I'm going to bring in a project management terminology here, is about your stakeholder analysis. Who are the stakeholders that are in the relationship? You need to identify who those stakeholders are and how much time you need to spend with those stakeholders in order to maintain that really effective business relationship. So if it means that I need to spend an hour every week with a certain person, then I will make that time to see that person an hour a week. Or if it means that I need to have a half a day a month almost, and then it's about understanding if it's just a quick check-in, a phone call, or a face-to-face, -face or online. I mean, these days there's so many methods to do that, but it's also about understanding what your person who you're working with also prefers. Mm, mm. That's a super good point, isn't it? What is the mechanism, if you like, or what's the method, you know, that somebody else would mm. really prefer you to be able to incorporate at least a little into your into your plan time? Marin, your thoughts? Um, that was pretty much what I was going to say. Um, just to add to that, um, asking people how they'd like to be engaged is normally a good one because sometimes they come back with a much easier way to engage them. I like to keep sort of notes in a calendar to remind myself to um, engage with certain people and then I mix it up as well. So I might phone them on a Friday morning and then on a Tuesday morning and then on a Wednesday afternoon, sort of each week at a different time so that they don't sort of come to expect a phone call from me at 8.30 every Friday morning. And just sort of mix it up and just you know, keep it interesting. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Marlene? Uh, another suggestion that I have over and above everything else that has been said so far is that I think when we are time poor, we also need to be uh, very conscious of the fact that um, you know quality is more important than quantity. So sometimes you might only have 10 minutes to spare for someone, but if you're giving them your full attention uh, and you're actually demonstrating that uh, you've, you've listened to what they have to say or you've given them really good information, et cetera, that 10 minutes can mean so much more than, than spending a whole half, half day where you don't achieve productive outcomes. Completely agree. Tom? And just to add to Malini's point of quality over quantity is preparation. So if you only have 10 minutes or 15 minutes to meet with somebody, if you can take five minutes even before that call or before that conversation to prep your notes, prep your questions, uh, and for any information that you need to share or talk about, that little bit of preparation saves time on the back end. Yeah, I t that's so important. You know, just ordering your thoughts a little bit. And if you are um, busy on email, try and try and put try and put the action near the top if you can do. Okay, and then the kind of context later. But that sounds funny sometimes, but often you know, for busy people. Um, they they struggle to read through all of the context and then extract mm -hmm. the action 
that's needed. The bit that you want their attention on, it's actually quite helpful sometimes. You can ask them, of course, but sometimes quite helpful to have that clear and uh, central, right, right up front, okay? Um, and then follow with the context to be able to, you know, for further reading or um, that can help a great deal and allow both sides to kind of tune into what the key point's going to be in that dialogue. All right, very good. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I can see the questions stacking up, so we're going to move on. So, Suchitra, can we take our next question, please? So a question from Kader Medri, who's watching us live. Can you give one secret behind successful business relationships? Okay, so it's one secret, and, and I'm going to add another word, each, okay, mm -hmm. to this. So let's try and think about this for a moment. One secret behind successful business relationships. I'm going to kick us off here because I'm going to talk about establishing trust. Mm -hmm. And trust is something that's earned rather than coming from, you know, any particular mm -hmm. position of authority or, you know, position within an organization or even externally as a consultant, you, you, you have to win trust. Um, Adrienne, start us off, please, and then Marion. I'm going to go with honesty because I think that a relationship is built on honesty and integrity. I know I'm added in another one there, but for me, honesty in a relationship is incredibly important to be able to build that ongoing, long lasting business relationship. All right, excellent. Thank you very much indeed. Marion? Um, I would actually say empathy for the other person and a genuine like and wanting to help that other person and help them to succeed because if they succeed, you succeed. So just really the working together, in, um, empathy, integrity. Thank you very much indeed. Marlene? Uh, I was going to say empathy as well, but since that's uh, been taken, my, my my next um, secret would be respect, because even if you if you um, you know do some wrong, right? Uh, as long as there's there's uh, there's mutual respect, you will still be able to find your way back um, you know, to getting things back on track again. So I would say yeah, respect. And, yeah, none of us are perfect people, so it's a very important thing. That mm -hmm. Tom, honesty, empathy, respect, all. Perfect answers. The, those are all pivotal in order to have good business relationships. And and the one thing that I would add is is having a follow through. So to actually build that trust and show energy input into the relationship is saying this is what I will do to help you, and actually follow through, do those things, complete those items, and uh, attempt to as much as you can go above and beyond their expectations because then. They will see that as, wow, this person really does care about me. They show respect. Um, they've been honest about what they've put in, into this uh, situation, right? And um, there's that, that element of empathy coming into it as well. I completely agree. And what a brilliant question from Kadem. Thank you so much for um, asking it. We really appreciate it. Um, I, I'm going to be really cheeky and just add in another one. And, and that is that... Um, Generally, it's a uh, degree of mutuality is involved in all of this. So the more that you can be explicit mm. and actually don't keep it a secret, you know, talk about business relationship management, talk about that there are methods, skills, there's a whole community of business relationship managers out there that you can tap into and, and join and learn from and grow and develop with and also share your way of doing things with them would be a brilliant thing to do. So if we can bring it kind of out of the secrets kind of store and out into the open, that would be fantastic because I think it's going to help everybody grow and develop in their work. So very good panel. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kadem, for a fantastic question. So Chitra, next question, please. Question from Amy. How do you overcome a mistake you've made in a business relationship? Marion, start us off on this, please. All right, well, this is one where you don't start off with a smile, okay? Uh, you need to absolutely apologize. You need to be sincere in your apology. You need to tell them how you're going to make it right, and then you need to make it right. And just absolutely make sure you follow through and double check with them that they're happy. Yeah, good point. Tom? That was a beautifully stated point. I, 
I would just add that it's um, it, it comes down to being honest with both yourself and that person. So everything that Marianne said that that exemplifies honesty, and the, the honesty with the self part comes to being okay. I do <laughs> recognize that I've made a mistake, and being willing to admit that is the first step towards taking that um, and and admitting that to the other person. Great, Adrian. And I think it was after you've done that whole, what, what Marion and Tom have spoken about, I think it's also about a process of internally going back to yourself and figuring out how you can avoid a mistake in the future. And, um, and it goes back to also the development of yourself internally and within your own work and understanding what you did and how you did and why it went wrong. Correct right, to uh, Molini. Uh, after you've done all of that, I think the other thing also to remember is not to feel disheartened. You know, Nick, as you said just a few moments ago, we are human beings, and yes, you know, mistakes do happen. Mm -hmm. There's no point in beating ourselves over it. What's important is what we learn from it and and what we uh, take forward. And you can expect even highly seasoned business relationship managers will make mistakes from time to time. That's part of who we are, mm -hmm. and that's what, uh, in fact. Sometimes I would say that's what um, you know makes makes things makes relationships even more interesting. That we we allow for our own mistakes and for mistakes by the other party as well. Yeah, I completely agree. When you're under pressure, mm -hmm. you know you see the best of people, mm -hmm. and from time to time you also see their vulnerability. Okay, and the vulnerability mm -hmm. is often expressed in um, you know perhaps behaviours or you know things that they might say and so on, which you know, can can cause some impact on on others, but it's still a vulnerability. All right. And um, some years ago, there was a very interesting uh, documentary about how people are trained and developed for taking really high stakes decisions. So it was in the context of the military, and it was in the context of taking decisions um, to be the captain of a nuclear submarine. And it's hard to imagine a set of circumstances where you're isolated from others, you have limited external communications, you're in a very close-knit community for weeks and sometimes months on end, and you are taking some of the, the largest decisions that is possible for a human being to bear. So with all of those things in mind, and you may choose a medical analogy or you may choose a career analogy from time to time, you know, these things, these situations are very challenging for people. And occasionally, you know, people will, you know, you'll see their vulnerability mm -hmm. through the way in which they respond to you. So be kind to them if, if you can as well. All right, very good. Let's move on, please. Uh, Suchitra, let's take our next question. Question from Mark. How can I demonstrate business relationship skills to a potential employer beyond using buzzwords on a CV? Arlene, start us off, please. Um, I would say, Mark, that uh, it's really important to give some examples of uh, situations where you've used um, or, you know, uh, your great business relationship management skills in order to achieve some outcome. So perhaps uh, there was a project that was uh, stuck, or um, you know there was um, you know historical experiences had caused some distrust and fractured a relationship. So perhaps ways in which you help to repair that situation uh, and and uh, you know progress things um, to satisfactory outcome. I think that's much more important than using buzzwords. In the business relationship management um, professional and uh, the certified business relationship management. Courses. We do, um, you know, we do introduce a lot of new vocabulary. But we always say that uh, relationship management is more art than science because you need to be able to apply it to a situation. Right? And I think this is one one situation where we should demonstrate that. Completely agree with that, Tom. And in addition to verbally expressing what you have done in the past to, to demonstrate your skills as a business relationship manager. Express it by doing in that relationship with whomever you're working with. Practice some of these skills that you've learned. Practice some of the uh, intentions and some of the actions that you've even heard in, in this conversation, in this panel, right? 
bringing these types of ideas forth and rather than saying, you know, only I have done this in the past, it's important to say and <laughs> say through doing, right? This is what I'm working on and, and this is how I'm showing up in our relationship so that you can see it and feel it for yourself. Thank you, Marion. I think the way that you also manage the uh, sort of interview process will show whether you've got good business relationship skills or not. You know, that's a really good time to shine with your skills and your personality and how well you can get on with people. Yeah, really true. Um, the, uh, the other thing that I would suggest on CVs is that what you need to do, it's very hard to demonstrate skill on a CV without using certain keywords mm -hmm. because the, you know, the e-recruitment modules are looking for those things. However, there is one way that you can absolutely project your CV higher up the stack, all right? And that is to take a qualification in business relationship management. Now, I would say that because I work for a, an examination institute, okay? But seriously, what happens is you take the qualification and you have a digital credential. The digital credential is linked to a database. The database itself is actually the preferred, it has the preferred metadata around your digital badge that e-recruitment engines is looking for, are looking for rather, all right? So that's why it's so important. Just having words, buzzwords on a, on a text file, text mining is used extensively in e-recruitment, but it does not trump the machine learning algorithm anywhere near as well as having a digital credential. All right. So there's some great courses to take. Take those, have those, display your badge with pride. Okay. And that will really augment your digital CV. Marlene, your thoughts on that? I think you make a great point, Nick. When I did the BRMP, which is the Business uh, Relationship Management Professional uh, Certification course some years ago, I had actually uh, been working as a business relationship manager for some time, right? and I was getting good results. But when I did the qualification, I like to say that it completely turbocharged my my um, uh, my practice because uh, it it helped me to to reflect on things that I was uh, that I was already doing and frame uh, things up in a way that would actually resonate with people and make a make a an even better impression. So the qualification can help in, in many ways, you know, not just uh, covering off uh, different types of skills that are critical to business relationship management, but also helping us to articulate and show up as professionals. Yeah, I agree with that. Now, beyond the CV moment, if you're selected for, you know, pre-screening or an interview of any time, then start talking about how you were able to influence without using you know situational authority because those again will demonstrate those business relationship mm -hmm. management skills early in the recruitment cycle mm -hmm. and are much more likely to be able to get you through to the later rounds so very good everybody thank you very much some real practical advice there so Chitra, if we can let's take our next question your question from a live viewer micah how do you manage a relationship where the other party is less competent than they think. This is not a current colleague. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, very good. I think we've all worked with folks sometimes who, um, uh, you know, who talk a good talk but don't necessarily know all of the detail underneath it. Um, Adrian, how do you how do you manage this professionally? Well, I think it um, comes down to you sort of identifying what, what sort of needs to be worked on. And I would surreptitiously or sort of suggest that we would go together to maybe, um, maybe there's an event on learning something or um, it's a, if it's an area that they need to understand better, then I would look at potentially uh, sending some articles for reading, uh, say, have you seen this? You know, is this something that we could potentially look at in further developing in the relationships or whatever we're working on? Um, maybe looking at uh, potentially putting together a meeting with some other people who are content experts or experts in whatever that person may not be particularly competent in. Yeah, that's a really good advice there, Marlene. Mm -hmm. um, I, I agree with uh, what Adrian has uh, just said. Uh, your question, uh, Mika, reminds me of um, 
you know, some training I attended years ago on conflict management. And the facilitator said that when you're working with someone who, um, you know, who, who has a different perspective, then you need to think that you're like a Sherpa, you know, and your job is to guide them onto the, onto the right path. So um, if, if you, you know, reframed your relationship to this person and then started doing all the things that Adrian suggested, I think you'll find it takes a lot of, uh, you know, uh, it takes a lot of um, angst out of the relationship, whatever you might be feeling right now. Yeah, it's really good advice. So one thing that I would suggest as well is celebrate. Celebrate the fact that, you know, perhaps they they aren't as, you know, competent, you know, in that area. Now, what do I mean by that? It it, it can often mean that there's a, a certain different way of thinking, perhaps. You know, they might not understand all of the pitfalls of what they're putting forward, perhaps, or they might understand the subject as deeply as you may or other colleagues may and so on. But actually, that can be quite refreshing and people can bring new ideas and new thoughts into it as well. So it's not always a negative thing. Um, it just needs careful nurturing and enablement and support. And that's what we're all here to do. I, I often think that um, you know social media is, is a tool that often polarizes us. It seeks to polarize us into a yes or no, you know, agree, disagree, you know, shout, be quiet kind of outcome. And actually, the majority of our life is somewhere on a spectrum in between those two absolutes. So, you know, work with people and um, I'm quite sure that you will get the most out of that situation and help them to become a little bit more self-aware. All right. Very good. Excellent. So, Chitra, let's move on, please. We'll take our next question. I think we can probably fit two more in. Question from Irene in Manchester. Which would you say is the most important skill? Listening problem-solving, leadership, collaboration? Oh, this is one of those lovely it depends ones, isn't it, really? Marion, start us off. I think they're all important, um, but I would say collaboration probably for me would jump out as being the most important because if you're doing collaboration right, you're actually doing the other three as well. You're listening, you're problem-solving, and you're providing leadership. So collaboration, I think, absolutely. Thank you, Adrian. So for me, out of all of those, listening would be my top one. And I say that because personally, I am partially deaf as well and I wear hearing aids. So I lip read. And so for me, it's about understanding what my the person I'm working with is saying and then repeating back to them. So listening is incredibly important in my work. We'll be able to make sure that I'm in the right space and understanding the way forward and doing the right thing and working, making the relationship stronger. Thank you very much indeed. Tom? <laughs> That's a, an incredibly difficult question to answer, right? In order to pick one, though, I, I would also say listening. In, because up front, that is the one, the one skill that I, I imagine, and for myself, um, really focus on the most. Because if I listen, then I'm able to identify their problems, and that makes problem solving easier. In, by listening, I'm demonstrating leadership as well from those around me. They say, okay, he, he's actually listening to what's going on. He understands um, and is focusing on improving us moving forward, right? That's, that's leadership is practice in a way. Um, and, and then the, the collaboration element as well. <laughs> I would say that collaboration is, is right there in terms of equal importance between that and listening but i i would personally select listening sort of from the beginning um elements of it absolutely right marlene uh i would actually say all of the above <laughs> what everyone what, what everyone has said i think um uh, the the only only other thing i might say is that i don't think um you know listening problem solving leadership and collaboration are mutually exclusive what is leadership if it's not, uh, you know, if it's not listening and collaboration? And how can we actually solve problems if we if we don't collaborate? So I don't really see these as either or skills, Irina. I think uh, all of them are uh, equally important. Yeah, I totally agree with you. As a as a kind of a mathematician, I imagine the Venn diagram here. There's a great deal of overlap. <laughs> between those different ellipses and the universal set is what makes fantastic people to work with to be inspired by to rely upon 
to be nurtured through the tough times and to be co-celebrating with when everything goes to plan and you know an achievement is made you know collectively it's fantastic so I'd say it's pretty tricky to pick the most important um mm-hmm. it really is one of those it depends type moments thank you very much in panel for bringing all of that to life so Suchita, we'll take our last question for today please question from julie what do you do when the business relationship is not balanced that is one side needs a relationship more than the other okay so um need here marion I would say if you're the one who needs the relationship more than the other person, then you need to put in the most amount of effort. So going back to the sort of stakeholder engagement, looking at um, this is now an important stakeholder for you. How are you going to manage the communication with them? How are you going to manage the relationship with them? And just put in the effort to make sure that it all works out. Um, if they need the relationship more than you do, then I think you just need to be a bit more gracious about that and, and just sort of make yourself available to them. Thank you very much, Adrian. I think this is a time when I go back to what's in it for me and what's in it I'm working with. And I go back to outlining in going back to basics and saying, Okay, this is how this is we started. And if it's if it's a relationship that's kind of petered out as you're going along the journey, maybe going back and understanding why you wanted the relationship to start in the first place, and then understanding from there what needs to be filled and if you need to make the extra effort and where you need to make the extra effort. It's an ongoing thing, isn't it? So it's about identifying those needs as you take that journey with the person. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Dif- different people's styles are quite different. And, you know, uh, some folks enjoy, you know, constant or very high frequency uh, touch points. Other people prefer to just be left alone to get on with things and then we'll come back to you when they're ready. So it's it's learning about each other more than anything, isn't it, really? And, mm-hmm. you know, one per- mm-hmm. one person's perception of need is often quite different to somebody else's. So. It's worthwhile spending time, I would suggest, to kind of get to know each other a little bit and, you know, see actually if uh, what the personal preferences are of, of different people in the teams that you're working with. All right, excellent. Well, look, today's been a fascinating journey through some of the key skills that we need to be able to develop to advance ourselves um, at work. And much of the advice that's been given actually is equally applicable, I think, outside of work when we're volunteering in our in our family lives and our, our relationships with friendship groups and so on. So excellent. Thank you very much. So we'll now hear some closing remarks. Um, so Marlene, if I may, I'll come to you first and then we'll hear from Tom. Uh, Thank you very much, Nick, for the opportunity to be on this panel. Um, I'm reminded of uh, a book that I read when I was at university called Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. And uh, the author actually Mm -hmm. says in that that the only Zen that you will find at the top of the mountain is the Zen that you bring with you. Um, And I think the same applies to relationships. Uh, You know, the qualities that we want to see in a relationship, we have to actually bring those qualities, that relationship ourselves. Very true. Thank you very much indeed. And we'll put um, a little link to that book in the chat for people. Um, Tom, your closing remarks, please, and then Marion. Thank you, Nick. And, and once again, it's, it's always a pleasure being on the panel and interacting with so many lovely people. Um, one last thing that I, I would add is don't forget to be playful. Don't forget to bring the positivity and the joy to what's going on. Every single one of us can be, be very busy. We, we also recognize that everybody else is busy, right? So it's if we can come into it with, okay, I'm going to try my best, but give myself some grace and say, it, it's okay if I make mistakes. It's okay if I'm not perfect in this leadership capacity or within these listening skills, right? Just recognizing that it's a journey and having fun along the way. that bring bring that joy into everything that we do marion and then adrienne 
Um, Nick, thank you very much for having me on the panel again. I always enjoy these discussions and I learn so much from them as well. So um, what I'd like to say as closing remarks is just treat others as you'd like to be treated and there's always the opportunity to be kind to other people. Certainly is fantastic comment there. Thank you very much indeed. Adrienne and then Suchitra. Well, um, Tom actually stole what I was going to say because I think I wanted to always make sure we add a bit of element of fun in the relationships. Um, the relationship shouldn't be tedious. Um, and I think it's about being authentic and just understanding that this is your life and it's the only one you have. So just be fun and authentic as well as honest and have that integrity. Thank you very much for having, uh, having me again, Nick. And I've really enjoyed today. So to my panel members as well, lovely. Thank you. Excellent. Well, well, thank you. It's a feeling is absolutely mutual from all of us at APMG. Um, Suchitra, your thoughts on today's session? It's been a great show, Nick, and I've had a great time listening to some very practical tips from the panel. So thank you so much for that. And um, I think Suchitra is going to be keeping a hawk-like look right at, uh, at me over the next week or so we do work together quite extensively so we try and implement <laughs> all of these ideas that we get we don't always manage it every day okay but we do do our best and so thank you on behalf of everybody uh, panel thank you to our producers online thank you for the folks who have joined in from all around the world today um having carrying on the conversation uh, on LinkedIn and on YouTube and joining in with us every step of the way. It's brilliant. Now then, for all of those folks who are online, over on our website, you can now search for and view answers to more than 900 questions um, that have been raised on Level Up or Midday Mentors or any of the other um, interview style pieces of content that we develop. It's an amazing free resource to connect you with more than 100 experts from around the world. And don't forget, you can listen to us on the audio versions of the shows on your preferred podcast platform. This Friday, the 16th, we're going to be hosting what will be for sure a very lively debate on when should you best choose a waterfall versus an agile project management um, technique. That's going to be an episode not to be missed. I'm sure that that will be a great deal of fun. Um, I think somebody else is going to be sitting in actually on the uh, facilitator chair on Friday. So that may well be um, Ellie Bauer. So not quite sure who's going to be doing that. Monday the 19th, we're going to be offering practical help on how to become a professional facilitator. It's an amazing role and one that can really make a difference when you're going through transformational change. So look out for that one. And then later on the same week on the 23rd, we're going to be looking at um, what you should uh, identify as good in cybersecurity training, what you should look out for. Subscribe to the show and we'll send you a personal summary of what's coming up and of course how you can join us here on the panel and level up your career with APMG. So thanks very much everybody. We'll see you next time.